Kings 18, Elijah looked at his heathen king, Ahab, who was a backslider, who had worshipped Baal, amen, those that, amen, aborted their babies and killed their own children and had heterosexual and homosexual sex on the altars of Baal, amen, glory to God, out in the open with the sex organ of a man, exalted, come on somebody as a backdrop, amen, as they worship this half bull and half man, Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Elijah the prophet woke up and said to him, how long are you going to halt between two opinions? If the Lord be God, there it is, Lord God. If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal be God, follow him. And the people did like a lot of church folk do today. 1 Kings 18, 21. And they answered him, not a word. That's how I know I'm preaching right a lot of times. People start getting quiet. He was preaching to a generation, a nation, who worshiped Baal during the week and on the Sabbath tried to come into Jehovah's temple and offer their little sacrifice. Ain't it just modern? Look at your neighbor and say, that's a bunch of bull. Because Baal was the image of a bull from waist up. Somebody shout, he's been too much bull. God says, I don't want bull, I want brokenness again. Because God said in Psalms 50, in verses 9, I'm going to spit and shampoo the carpet. Bring your vacuum cleaners tomorrow night. Hallelujah. In, in Psalms 50, in verses 9, God told the children of Israel, he said, I no longer want a bullock from your house. Somebody shout, God don't require no more bull. Up in this point, then, God said you got to bring a bull out and sacrifice it on an altar. But he said over there in Psalms 51, verses 16 and 17, the sacrifices of God, come on somebody, are a broken and a contrite spirit. And a broken spirit he will not despise. Ahab looked at Elijah, verse 17, the first Kings 18, and said, aren't you the one troubling Israel? The world today and its politicians of the left with their bias agenda wants anti-Christ to take the place of Christ. They want anything to do with the Bible thrown out the window. They want abortion. They want homosexuality rights in marriage and they're getting it because God's judgment got his back the way and say, I've turned you over to do what you want to do. That's part of his judgment. Come on somebody. But they want everything to do with God put out of the public, thrown aside. They say we're the trouble. That our religion brings the trouble. That all religions are the trouble. Are the problem. Hallelujah. And Ahab looked at Elijah and said, you're the one causing the trouble. You're the reason we've got famine. You're the reason we've got drought. Hallelujah. And the prophet of God, not a pope. There's a big difference between a prophet and a pope. A pope will visit your Ahab because a pope did visit our Ahab. Jezebel wants to get in there now. Come on. Anybody's a bell worshiper if they say abortion's okay. If homosexual marriage is now accepted, them bell worshipers, that's what bell worshipers did anciently that Ahab and Jezebel, that old biblical witch, served. But Ahab was worse than Jezebel because he tried to keep Jehovah. He worshiped Jehovah on the Sabbath, amen, but he went to Baal's groves and Baal's parties. Come on, somebody. And knelt, and bailed, and knelt down before Baal. Somebody shout, God's tired of Baal pits. God give us some more prophet pits, some more real pool pits again. A pope will come to your Ahab like a pope did to ours this year, amen, and say, uh, global warming, global warming. But a prophet will come and say, global warning, warning, warning if you don't repent. A pope will go to... Christians and say love the Muslims, but a prophet would probably go to the Muslims and say repent, you must love the Christian. Yeah. 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 Hey! But Elijah the 
prophet looked at Ahab in verse 17 of 1 Kings 18. He said, I'm not the one troubling Israel, but you are in that you have forsaken the commandments of the Lord your God to follow after Baal. And that's when he shouted in verse 21. Somebody say the word of the prophet. He said, how long are you going to keep living like this? Halting between two opinions. Got Jehovah on the Sabbath. But come Monday, come Sunday, Monday. There you are back worshiping Bill. Having your unmarried sex. Fornicating. Committing adultery with your pornography, because that involved bell worship. They erected a man sex organ as a backdrop. Men had sex with men, and women with women, and men with women. It didn't make no difference. Come on, and they killed their babies. They threw them into Baal's fire. That's how ancient bell worship looks. It still looks the same today. It's just been updated. Its names are more artful. Come on, all in the name of women's rights and equality. Well, I just said, you're what's causing the trouble. You're what's bringing the judgment. Because you want God on the Sabbath. You want Jehovah on the Sabbath. You want Jehovah when it don't rain. You want Jehovah when it's a famine. You want Jehovah when you got a problem. You want Jehovah and his power to heal when you need a miracle in your body. Oh, but, but when you ain't got no need for no sign or wonder or miracle, then you think you can just go to Baal's world. Hallelujah. And God said it's double trouble. I prophesy tonight the trouble in this nation and the trouble in some of your lives is a double trouble. Somebody shout a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. James chapter 1 in verses 8. You can't have what Miley Cyrus says. You can't have the best of both worlds. 2 Corinthians 6, 17 and 18 said, Come ye out from among the world. Be ye separate, saith the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing. And I will receive you. And I will be unto you a father. And you shall be called my sons and my daughters. Here it is, saith the Almighty. There is no saith the Almighty until you come out from all the world. Somebody shout, this is the gospel. This is the stuff that's missing. Thank God not here. And I ain't just saying it because I'm up here. I know this man, old friend. Come on, somebody. Somebody say double trouble. Run to Jesus when you got a need. But when all the needs are met, why do you think maybe you keep having so many needs? He's probably trying to reveal to you your greatest need is him. He will be second to none. He does not desire visiting rights. He either has full custody or he don't have, period. And the people answered him, not a word. How long will you hope between two opinions? If the Lord, if Adonai, master, owner, if he's God, if he's the Almighty, follow him. To follow him, you must take up your cross, deny yourself. Luke 9, 23. Forsake something. You got to leave it behind. The world and its sin. But if Baal be God, follow him. But you can't have both. When is this modern church world going to get it? You can not have the best of both. 
both. It's amazing in the modern church world, some try to live so close to the world and see if they can still stay with God. See just how close. That night when surrender became so sweet. And I said on that fourth pew on the right side, sitting on the outside in the wires, bro, Church of God. I knew right then and there, tonight, the world loses me. You can have it, devil. Yes. 